Welcome everyone to the Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women, CTAS Purpose Area 5 webinar. My name is Christina and I will be your moderator for today. Our presenter today will be James Smith and Michael Sterling from the Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women. We're at a point where we want to take questions from you. I encourage you to know that this is your time. No question is a dumb question. We are here for you. We'd rather you ask your questions and be misinformed. So take the next few minutes to, you know, if you have questions to ask us, and I'm going to turn it over to Fox Valley to let me know if there's any questions at this point. Great. Thank you, James, and thank you, Michael. We do have a few questions at this time. The first question right. is, are we able to get one letter of support that is signed by all of our collaborative partnerships Therefore, there would be a list of signatures for one letter versus one letter per partner. Is this okay? You can do it. There's nothing that says you can't. I just wonder how effective that letter is going to be. If you have like 10 partners in a one-page letter, I'm going to fail to see how that partnership is significant. How is that going to be laid out in one letter? I would encourage you to think about it that way. But technically, no. There's nothing that says you can't. But ask yourself, is it really going to paint that partnership in the best light? Great. Thank you, James. Um, we do have another question here, and that is on page nine of the solicitation um, mm -hmm. for the other attachments area. The mm -hmm. last one says we need documentation of collaboration. Can you go into uh, more detail on what this is? Because MOUs and support letters are listed. so more clarification on what collaborative documentation is would be helpful. Okay, so the first, the, how I'm going to answer that question first is that is different per office that you are applying to. So whatever purpose area you're applying to, you need to look at what they're specifically saying in their individual section. But as it relates to OBW, um, tribal governments program purpose area five. If you give me one second, I'll tell you exactly what it means regarding that. So just one second. I'm just getting to where I want to point that out for you. Okay. So for for OVW tribal governments program, a collaborative partnership is required. Applications for this purpose area must demonstrate that the proposal was developed in consultation with a qualified partner. For the purposes of the solicitation, a qualified partner is, one, a nonprofit or non-governmental Indian victim service provider organization, such as a domestic violence shelter program or a rape crisis center, or a nonprofit, non-governmental tribal domestic violence or sexual assault coalition, or three, an advisory committee that includes women from the community to be served by the proposed project. And if you look in the solicitation, that is on page 25 of the solicitation as it relates to OBW Purpose Area 5. For the other purpose areas, I can't speak to that. I would just strongly encourage you to look at their individual sections and see if you can get that detail. If not, send an email to tribalgrants at usdoj.gov and reference the pur pur purpose area that you're talking about, and we will get you in touch with the POC for that purpose area. Excellent. Thank you, James. And we have another question, and that is, our tribe operates an OBGYN clinic, and it is a PL638 program under an Indian Health Service Master Health contract. Native Women's Health Care would like to apply for PA5 to establish a sexual assault division for this clinic. Is this okay? Hearing sexual assault surface level, it sounds like it could be. I would need to understand a little bit more exactly what you're doing. So I would need that person to send me an email at james.smith12 at usda.gov, say exactly what it is you're trying to do. However, do not send me an application narrative. Do not send me an abstract. I will not be able to review it. Please send it to me in the format of an email saying, hey, James, I was on your webinar. We're this type of organization. This is what we do. This is what we would like to do. Is this allowable? If you do it that way, I can respond to you and answer it. And I can also check with folks in my office that I would need to get a little bit more clarity on. But I ask you to follow those instructions and I'll be sure to get you an answer. Great. Thank you, James. And another question is, we have a fiscal year 2017 award. 
Our program mm -hmm. officer suggested that we apply for continuation. Mm -hmm. Would we submit the continuation through this solicitation or through something like a GAN? It would be this solicitation. You can't apply for funding through a GAN. Great. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm. And another question is... Christina, before you read that question, the last question, the person that asked that, if the 2017 grantee, please check to see what your current balance is and that you're under 50%. Because I would hate for you to be in a situation where you apply and you have 50% or more of your funds awarded. There's a chance that even if your application is good, you may not get funded. Or if it's good, it may be, and you request, let's say, another $900,000, what you request, it may be severely reduced by what you have left. So just do your due diligence and see how much money you have left and see if you're at an acceptable level before you go through the hassle of putting putting all the work into a new application. Um, but I hope that you do have a low amount of funds left and that you do apply. I'm just trying to save you the hassle if, if it looks like you have a overwhelming amount of your previous award left, then we'd probably need to talk. Great, thank you, James. And if we wanted legal assistance for our program and we finished the legal assistance certificate, can this be submitted without a signature from our authorizing official? I guess I'm confused because if you if you're applying for the tribal government's program for 2020, it's a new project, and so every time you apply for a new project or new funding, that type of paperwork needs to be done over again. So it it can't be a situation where you have a 2016 or 2017 award or even earlier, and you're saying you know we want to do you know maybe if it's a continuation situation. We can talk about it a little bit, but I still think you're going to need to submit another letter for legal assistance because it just needs to coincide with the, the funding that you're getting for the new year. So I would say, yes, you still need to submit what's required for you to submit when you're requesting legal assistance. Great. Thank you, James. And another question is, if you had previous funding and you want to apply for a different area of funding, such as better intervention services, can you do that in the new application? Yeah, absolutely. You sure can. Great. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm. And we do have a follow-up from um, the question regarding the OBGYN clinic and um, mm -hmm. the sexual assault. And that was, they, they wanted to know if they would be on the right track to respond to the sexual assault reported and unreported cases for an area located off the reservation with a large population of Native women. This would include rape kits and examinations. Is that on the right track for the, for the solicitation? The person who asked that question, can you please send me an email? I'm going to need to consult with my legal team um, because it seems like it's a, it's a gray area. And I don't want to say yes and be wrong. I need to consult with them. So please shoot me an email, and I promise I will give you a definitive answer. I'd rather be 100% that I'm giving you the correct information and not guessing, because this is a unique situation. We've never actually had this question before. So that's why I want to do my due diligence to make sure that I get you the best answer. Excellent. Thank you, James. And another question is, if we wanted to connect survivors to culturally-based services or ceremonies, such as a sweat lodge, are we able to use funds to engage with community elders who already currently have a lodge in the works and pay for the upkeep and time the elder service provides, or the elders provide? Or will these uh, funds need to be used? Go ahead. So they're go looking on. to see if they can work with um, their community elders who already have the lodge and pay for the upkeep and time, or would they need to use the funds to build their own lodge um, and pay for that upkeep? Well, we've done things with sweat lodges and healing circles and things of that nature. Michael, is there anything you want to say on that? Like, is there, is there a preference or it can be done either way? Like, what's your thought from a GFM standpoint? Even uh, with that, it's kind of had to see the comparison. Uh, I don't think there is an issue with renting it out. Um, if it's in the community, especially if it's if it's already there, it's kind of like probably useful. It's probably better financially to just rent it out, especially if it's going to be utilized right. within the community. If the if the tribe doesn't have one at all, um, you would just need to provide just more, you know, supported documentation and 
and kind of comparison and kind of a, a detailed breakdown on the reasoning to build one instead of writing it. And I'm guessing like one reason would be if there isn't one in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't see a problem with it financially as long as it's not like an ups, like an obscene amount. And I guess also the tripod would like should do at least a bidding for this way. Of course, if your community only has one, then that's what it is. But if the the cost has to be reasonable. It can't be an enormous amount uh, for rent. Great, thank you, Michael and James. And another question is on past solicitations. The abstract was required. Is this current solicit in this current solicitation there is no mention of abstract that I could find. Is the abstract needed? Yes it is. And where you're gonna find it is there's a document called the application cover sheet. If you open that document up, there are very strict and detailed um, instructions on how you are to do an abstract. The abstract is mentioned in that document in that same document, there's also an additional question that you need to ask. You need to use the document, the application cover sheet, to address the question and to write your abstract. Do not use your own t format. Use the template that we provided. The template is required. Great. Thank you, James. Mm -hmm. And we have another question. Is it in our best interest to acknowledge in our application that we did not spend what was anticipated and share why and how we changed the program to reflect what the next three years would look like? I'm a little confused on that question because it sounds like be a current grantee that seems like they have a lot of money left over. So I'm trying to get some context behind it. Like I, I would need more to be able to answer that question. It's very vague. And we'll send a follow-up to see if we can get some additional clarification. Okay. And we do have some clarifications from the previous question. They're providing clarification that they had awards funded in 2017 and that they have spent approximately 70% of that award. Oh, well, I mean, they're in good shape. I mean, that means that as of right now, they only have 30% of that award left. And I have no reason to think that by March 31st, which is after the solicitation closes, that they'll have even more of that spent down. They're already under the threshold, so they're good to go. Okay, great. Thank you. Let me just clarify, though. In saying that, I'm meaning you're good to go to apply. I'm not saying that if you apply that you're going to get I just want to be very clear about that. Great. Thank you, James. And just a few more reminders that programmatic or general assistance with solicitation requirements can be, you can reach out to the Response Center. That's one 800 421-6770 or email tribalgrants at usdoj.gov. And the Response Center's hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And for technical assistance with submitting an application in GMS, please contact the GMS Service Desk at 888-549-9901. And that's option three or email gmshelpdesk at usdoj.gov. And the GMS service desk is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. James or Michael, do you have additional information or tips that you would like to share as everyone prepares their applications? The only thing I would add is just a few things. You guys are coming into the home scratch for those of you who are seriously considering applying or already started. You need to start dwelling down and getting these applications prepared. Do not wait to the last night to fill and do your application and submit it. I will repeat that again. Do not wait. You typically make mistakes. Like I've seen mistakes where people will submit a Word document for their narrative and it's a track changes version and it has all these comments and editorials. We have to accept that exactly the way it is. I can't go in and turn off your comments or your track changes no one else because that's considering altering an ed application and giving someone an unfair advantage. So know that how you turn your materials in is exactly what will be turned in and reviewed. Make sure that you are turning in a completed budget, a project narrative for each purpose area you're applying to, and also make sure that you're submitting your tribal and community justice profile. If you are missing any of those things, you run the severe chance of not being considered or even making it past BMR. 
So I reiterate, there are three things in the solicitation that are starred that are absolutely required. Tribal community and justice profile, a budget with the budget narrative attached to it. And if you're applying for COPS, that would also include the demographic form, but for COPS only. And then a purpose area narrative for each purpose area in which you're applying. So what I mean is, if you decide that you're gonna to apply to purpose area five, one, six, and seven, there needs to be four different project narratives, not just one. To make sure that you're using the templates that we provided, the templates are all required this year. We gave very strict instructions, especially with the application cover sheet. It gives very de good details and writing prompts for how you are to do the abstract. Please follow the writing prompts and just fill in the necessary information. We did it that way because it gives us guided information that we needed and we also wanted to make it easier on you. So all you had to do was plug in key things instead of writing for scratch, from scratch. Follow directions, proofread, everybody that's working on your application, the person doing the budget, the person doing the project narrative, the person getting the letters of support. You guys all need to be talking. You need to be at a table looking at the application before it's submitted. Walk away, come back, get someone who doesn't have anything to do with grants to read it. Like, I'm just trying to position you guys and encourage you all to do the best that you can to do these applications well. If by some happenstance you run into a technical issue, please follow the instructions in the solicitation. Someone will reach out to you. If that someone is me or if it's someone else, it will probably more than likely be me. You will be given strict instructions on what you need to do and when you need to do it, please make sure that you follow those. I'm trying to think what else I can tell you. Register for GMS. If you are you, when you name your documents, try to use the exact names that we are calling stuff in the solicitation. So if I say application cover sheet, if I say purpose area narrative, if I say tribal and community justice profile, those should be the names of your documents. And if, if you want to even do us one better, let's just or your arc tribe. You can say your arc tribe, purpose area narrative for purpose area five. Like you can make it even more specific. The more specific, the better, but we shouldn't have to be guessing what the documents are. I'm trying to think what else. If you are submitting a tribal resolution, if you're a designee, again, make sure it's signed, make sure it, it has all the required information in there, make sure your budget looks good, the calculations add up, join the checklist webinar on Thursday. It's the last one. If you can't think of any questions now, come to that webinar prepared. I'll be on there along with a lot of other folks. Look at the application quick start guide for further frequently asked questions. I will tell you that we often get questions about the page limits. COPS is the only office in which there's one, there's eight pages. Everybody else is either 10 to 15 or 15 pages. So, you know, pay very close attention to that. Use the timeline template. Do use that if you're only applying the one, delete the rest of the purpose areas out and only include the purpose area in which you're applying to. But it's very important that you follow those templates to a T. We have them set up that way so that you're not leaving out important information that we need. Again, just don't be afraid to ask questions. We'd rather you email us and call us. I'm going to tell you, to be honest with you, email is much better. It's just much better to email to ask your questions because if we're in meetings or things, we can do two things at once. But if you try to get us on the phone, we may be in a meeting and we can't physically talk at the time. But again, just proofread. And I mean, hopefully most of you have already started a good portion of your application and you're not going to wait to the last minute. And also, if you have more than one application submitted in, we're going to take the most recent one submitted. So make sure that it's completed. I'm trying to think of anything else. I think I'm out of information, but I do wish each of you the best of luck. We look forward to receiving your applications and reading them and reviewing them and just encourage you to work very hard on those and to read the solicitation. And I think on that note, that's all I have to say today. Thank you, James. And we did just receive another question. Okay. And that question do we need to cite our sources and is there room for a reference page or how should we include our reference and citations given the paper lim or the page limitations? I mean, I personally think it's always good if you're quoting something or copying something to give appropriate credit where it's due. But I mean, there's nothing to say that you can't create an attachment that says, references for my purpose area narrative and include that. There's nothing preventing you from doing it. 
Great. Thank you, James and Michael. Mm -hmm. And were there any final comments that either of you would like to share? Um, nope. I'd just like to thank my colleague, Michael, for being on all these calls with me and doing a great job. He is a wonderful resource for the applicants who have potential questions. And if you become grantees, he's even a better resource. So thank you, Michael, for partnering with me through this webinar series. I really appreciate it. And I'd also like to thank Fox Valley, who puts this on for us every year. I appreciate mm -hmm. your help as well. No problems. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, James and Michael. It appears that we do not have any additional questions at this time, so we would like to thank you for joining us today. We hope you can join us um, for our last webinar on Thursday, February 13th, and wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.